Tenach Malchutecha Kadava Hamu Beshireu Zecha Al Yedei David Meshiach Tzidkecha Yim loch adonai lalam alaha yichzi yon l'roba do hallelujah l'roba do ni lech l'nitzim yim yirad shev shuchal v'hibn v'heb yim erok ha'ta baruch ha'ta adonai ha'el ha'kadom Ihi hu le ratzonim refi vegi onni bi le fanecha Adonai tsuri hi vego ali Yit grabi rashem hei raba Vel ma di vrach yu tev le mich malchu tebe chayech or merchon Uvchero beit Yisrael Vagalav izman kari hi vimmeru amen Yehish mei raba mevora Leolam leom mehomayim. Barach vishtabach vipaar vidrom amina sevite davite lebedal alash megud shabrich ulel megobich lebedal tushpechata venechemata damiran bel mabim ru amen. Titkabel tzlot honovat hondechol Israel kodam obohoni vishmaya bim ru amen. Yehish tamar rabamin shmaya vechayim aleinu begol Israel vim ru hu amen. Ose shalom avliya se shalom. עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ועל כל יושבי תבל, וימרו אמן. 168, we're set to remove the Sefer Torah from the Ark. אין כמוך. אין כמוך ואלוהים אדוני, ואין כמעשיך מלכותך מלכות, כל עולמים וממשלתך בכל דור ודור, אדוני מלך, אדוני מלך, אדוני Adonai Zalayamoitain Adonai Varech et Amovashanom Aharami Tivna Hopal Vayehi bin Saron, Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Vayachutsu Ayvacha, 
Veyanusu mesanecha mipanecha ki mitzion teitei Torah ki mitzion teitei Torah udevar Adonai mi Yerushalayim Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Leamo Israel Bigdushato. Bottom of page one seventy. Baby, Velishme Kadisha Kadisha Yakira Anna Emar to Shabahan Velishme Kadisha. Kadisha Yakira Anna Emar to Shabahan Yehei Raba Kadama Deti Tahli Bi Beoraita Vetashlin Mishalin Deli Bi Veli Badekolama Israel, let Avulachain, Velishlam. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu, Gadol Adonainu, Kadosh Shemo. Here we are. We're going to get right into our Torah reading. Good Shabbos, everyone. We are on page 374. This is uh, Parshat Bo, 
uh, and and really what we find in our parsha are the the, the this is the the final few uh, plagues, um, although except for the last one. So we we really get to uh, to um, dark you know locusts and uh, and through to uh, to darkness, and we'll see the 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 drama uh, intensify and the announcement of the of the tenth plague that comes uh, toward the end of our parsha and uh, the Pesach offering. This is also when we when we when we do celebrate Passover. Um, some of our some of our Torah reading comes from uh, from this parsha. So there's a there's some familiarity uh, in here, both in story and in frequency with which we read the text. We're delighted that. Rabbi Helene Edinger, and uh, maybe alone or with with Henry, will be kind of uh, reading our our first Aliyah for us, page three seventy four. Amy is our Gabbai. Veya, uh, oh, where is this? I don't know. Viazor again. Amen. Ya amo Hanan ben Lev Hakohen. Right, we're calling on Andy for our Kohen, our first Alia. For who at an eye, humble rock. Baruch at an eye, Elohim, Melech, Olam, Asher, Bachar, Banu, Miko, Hamim. And not on Lanu at Torato, Baruch at Taranai, no ten hot Amen. By a home here, Adonai Moshe, Boho El Paro. He ani Badati at Libo, that Lehebavada, Leman, she tea, Ototai Elebekir Boho. Ulemahan tisaper bells nevin ha uven bin ha et a sheher hitalalti be mitzrayim ve et ototai a sher saham tivam vida tehem ki ani adonai bayavo moshe ve aharon el paro. I am Ruhu Elav, Ko Amar Adonai Elohei Ha'ivrim, Ad Matai Me'anta, Le'anot Mipanai, Shalach Ami Vaya Avduni, Ki Ima En Atah Leshaleyach Et Ami, Hineni, Mevi machar arbehe bigvulecha. Bechisa et ehein haaretz velo velo yuchalir ohot et haaretz. Veachal et yeter hapleta. Ani sheheret lachem min habarad. Veachal et kol haaretz hatzom. Oh, <laughs> Ahad hayom hazeh, vayifen vayetzeh me'im haroh. Vayom ruhu avdei faroh elav. Ad matai iye zeh lanu lemokeh shalach, shalach et ha-ha-ha-anashim vayavduhu et Adonai Eloheim. A terem te daha ki avda mitzrayim. Vayu shahal et Moshe vet aharon el paro. Vayomer alehem lehu ibdu et adon 
Lehu, lehu, idu, et Adonai Elohechem, miva mihi aholchim. Vayohome Moshe, bene arenu ubiske nehenu nelech. Bevanenu ubiv no tehenu, betsonehenu ubiv karenu nelech. Ki hag Adonai lanu, vayomer alehem. Yehi chen Adonai imachem ka'asher. Ashalach etchem net tapchem. Rehu ki ra'ah neged penechem. Lo chen lechunah hagvarim. Ve'ibduhu et Adonai, ki ota atehem mevakshim. Vigaresh otam me'et penei faros. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu Torah, temet v'chei olam natah betokeinu, Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha-Torah. That's right. Shakoa. Here's yeah. a hello to uh, Andy and um, and a, a big thank you to Susan and Andy for sponsoring our kiddush. We'll we'll formally recognize you at the end of the service for sponsoring our kiddush, but just a just a preview right now. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm a David Avram Ben from Avachayim Halevi. Baruhu et Adonai Havarach. Baruch Adonai Havarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Havarach Le'olam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Ohinu Melech Ha'olam. Asher Bar Harbanu Mikol Ha'amim. When I tell you, I will tell you, Baruch Adonai Nutin HaTorah. Amen. Ba'yomer Adonai El Moshe. Neteyadcha ale heretz mitzrayim bar beheve yaal ale heretz mitzrayim v'yochal ekol ehesev ha'aretz e kol asher hishir habarad v'yet Moshe et Matehu ale heretz mitzrayim v'adonai nihag ruach kadim ba'aretz kol hayom ahu v'chol halayla ha'boker haya v'ruach hakadim nasa Et harbeh v'yal harbeh ahal kol haheretz mitzrayim v'yinach v'yinach b'chol gevul mitzrayim kaveid meod lefanav lo haya v'hein arbe kamohu v'yacharav lo yekein v'yichah sedein kol haheretz v'atech shacharetz. Vayohocha et kol esev ha'aretz ve'et kol pri ha'ehitz asher hotir habarad v'lo notar kol yerek ba'ehitz uve'esev hasadeh b'chol eretz mitzrayim v'yimaher paro likro l'moshe u'le'aharon v'yohomer chatati l'adonai eloichem v'lachem Vata sana chatati achapam vati ru ladonai elohechem viaser me alahai rak et amaveta zeh vayet se mina meim haro vayet vayetar el adonai vayafo adonai ruach yam chazak me od vayisa et ha ar ar Arba arbe vayit kaehu yamasu lo ni lo ho nishar arbe echad bechol gevu mitzrayim vayechazek adonai et leif paro velo shilach et bene yisrael vayomer adonai el Moshe nete yacha al hashamayim vii choshech al eretz mitzrayim viameish choshech. Vayehid Moshe et Jado al Hashamayim. Vayehid Choshech Apelah b'chol Eretz Mitzrayim shloshet Yamim. 
לא ראו איש איש את אחיו איש את אחיו ולא קמו איש מתחתיו שלושת ימים ולכל בני ישראל היה אור במהושבותם ארוך אתן עיני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר ברוך נתן לנו תורת אמת וחיי עולם נתן בתוכנו ברוך אתן עיני נותן התורה. אמן. תעמוד יקודית בת משה ולאה השלישי Weiss is our, our third, and we're, 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 uh, we're delighted that David sought to hold up for the second Elia. David uh, took a bit of a spill on ice this week, and um, mm -hmm. hopefully just more, uh, uh, you know, fraud. More fraud, <laughs> right, right. But, but I think you averted, you averted the worst, um, but you still have uh, some healing to do, so we wish David would well. And, and your humility. The third Aliyah, page 377, verse 20. <laughs> ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים ונתן לנו את תורתו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. אמן ויקרא פרעה אל משה ויאמר לכל עבדו את אדוני רק צאנכם ובקרכם יוצג גם תפכם ילכם לכם, ויאמר משה גם אתה תיתן בידינו צבחים ויולות ועשינו לאדוני אלוהינו וגם וגם מקננו ילך עמנו לא תישאר פרסה כי ממנו ניקח לעבוד את אדוני אלוהינו ואנחנו לא נדע מה נעבוד את אדוני עד בנו שמה, ויחזק אדוני את לב פרעה, ולא אבא לשלחם, ויאמר לו פרעה, לך לך מעלי, ישמר לך. אל תוסף רעות פני, כי ביום רעותך פני תמות, ויאמר משה, כן דיברת, לא אוסיף עוד רעות פניך, ויאמר אדוני אל משה, עוד ניגע אחד אבי אל פרעה, ויאל מצרים אחרי כן ישלח אתכם, מזה כשלחו כלה גרש יגרש אתכם, מזה בזה דבר, דבר נא באזני העם וישאלו איש מאת רעהו ואישה מאת רעותה כלי כסף וכלי זהב וייתן אדוני את חן העם בעיני מצרים גם האיש משה גדול מאוד בארץ מצרים בעיני עבדי פרעה ובעיני העם ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת בחיי עולם נטע בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן. תאמה רפת שרה בת ראובן דוד וחייל. I am. I characteristically, I am. That is going to volunteer. Call for sleep to volunteer on a weapon. Volunteer mission. And we are, we're thrilled for you. We're proud of you. We're inspired by you. And come back and 
come up here and you'll, you'll share some of your, your first hand accounts. Um, and we wish you a Nisiyak of our faith and the fellow. We've all had a What page are we on? Uh, we are on page 379. Birth. Verse 4. 379. Verse 4. Baruch Adonai and 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 Baruch Ohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohohoh
and just want to say with this last aliyah, um, Risa is remembering um, her beloved husband, Evans Yorzeit. Um, and as you said on the uh, Zoom last night, um, how much you learned from him, what a wonderful man he was. We all learned from him, and he is deeply missed um, in our congregation. Um, and may his memory always be for a blessing for you and for your family. And with this aliyah, um, Gila takes this aliyah with Mika because Gila is celebrating a special birthday this week. So in advance, we wish you Yom Huledet Sameach. And after your aliyah, maybe Mika will lead us in some singing, okay. a, a song I bet she knows. Amen. Amen. Ufasach Adonai al hapetach v'lo yitain hamashpit lavo el batechem lin gov u'shmartem et adovar hazeh v'chok l'cha u'lepanecha adolam v'haya kitavo u'el haaretz v'asher yitain Adonai lachem k'asher diber u'shmartem et ha'avoda hazot Vehaya ki omru alechem benechem ma habuda hazot lachem va martem sevach pesach hu ladonai asher pasach albate bene Israel ben mitzrayim ben okpoet mitzrayim viat batenu hitzil vayikon ha'am vayishtach avu vayelchu vayasu bene Israel Kasher tzivad onai et Moshe v'yaharon kenasu. Baruch atah Adonai lehinu b'chalam asher datamanu Torah temet v'chayol lam natabek tochenu Baruch atah Adonai notin haTorah. Amen. Mika, you want to sing to Ima? Yom huladet sameach. Yom huladet sameach. Yom huladet sameach. Yom huladet sameach. Yamo Ruben Ben Avraham Vasa Ashishi
Baruch Ata Adon. Oh, I'm sorry. Baruch Et Adonai Hamvara. Baruch Adonai Hamvara Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher Baharbanu Miko HaAmim. Benatan Lanu Et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Amen. We're on the top of page 387, verse 29. Amen. Vayihi b'chatsi halai l'avadonai. Ikat ho b'chor b'eretz Mi b'chor paro ha'yoshev al kiso. Ad b'chor hashvi asher b'vet habor s'chol b'chor b'hema. Vayakom paro lai lahu b'chol avata b'chol mitzrayim. Vatihi tzer kagadola b'mitzrayim. Ki ein vayet asher ein sham mei. Vayikra l'moshe l'harom lai la. Vayomer kumu tzeu mitoch ami gam atem gam b'nei Yisrael. Ulechu ifzu et Adonai kedar b'chem. Gam sonchem, gam bekarchem, kechu kasher di bartem, ulechu beirachtem, gam oti. Vatechezat mitzrayim al ha'am, l'naher l'sholcham min ha'aretz, ki amru kulanu meitim. Vayisa ha'am et betzeko terem yechmatz, misharotam, tzwerot besim lotam, al shechmam. Uvne Israel asu ki var Moshe vayishalu mi mitzrayim kleches efu kleis ahav usmalot vadonai natan echein ha'am beinei mitzrayim vayash ilum vayinatzlu et mitzrayim vayisu uvne Israel me ra'am seis sukota kishesh me yode lef ragli hagvarim levad mitav Begam erev rav alai tam v'tzon uvakar miknek ha-veit me'od. V'yofu et ha-batzek asher hotzi yumi mitzrayim u'got matzot ki lo chameitz ki gorshu mi mitzrayim v'lo yachlu lihit ma'mea v'gam tzega lo asu lahem u'moshav b'nei Yisrael asher yashvu b'mitzrayim Shloshi him shana vi arba me o shana vayi hate shloshi him shana vi arba me o shana vayi be et sam hayom haze yatsu kolzi vote I don't know I may erits meets Brian Leel Shimurum who I don't know I love the army erits meets Brian who are like lots hell I don't know Shimurim l'chol b'nei Yisrael l'dol tam. V'yomer Adonai el Moshe v'aharon zot kukat ha-pasach kol ben nechar lo yochal bo v'chol ebed ish b'knat kasef u'malata auto az yochal bo tosha v'sachir lo yochal bo V'vayet echad yeachel lo totzi min habayit min habasar chutza v'etzem lo tish berubo kol adat Yisrael yasu oto v'chi aguri tashnager v'yasapes achladonai himol lo kol zachar. Be as ye crab la asoto, the hayake is raka aretz, the hol arel lo yo calvo, to ra acha di yela is rak, the lage regard betokem, by a suk open a Israel kash erzi vad, on I at Mosheviet at our own cane a suk, why he be at some high own passe. O si Adonai et b'nei Yisrael, may Eretz be Tzrayim, al tzivotam. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech, ha'olam, asher natan, lanu torat emet, v'chayei, olam nata, 
Etohenu, Baruch Hatadonai, no ten hatora. Ya Amo, David Ben Gershon, Vishoshana, Hashivi. Yashapach to Alan Sloan for chanting these last two aliyots for us. Baraku et Adonai Hamvarak. Baruch Adonai Hamvarak Lulam Bayed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melakaralam. Asher Bar Karbanu Miko Hamim. Minatalanu et Tarato. Baruch Ata Adonai Notin Hatara. Amen. Page 391. Amen. Page 391. Yamat <laughs> Al <laughs> Abata Kopeta Rekam Ladunai, Papeta Shegebahema, Shei Yelaha Hazkar Yim Ladunai, Kopeta Balonai, Kopeta Hamot, if there, Besser, Vim Vim Lotip, Deva Arapo, Kobekor Adam, Bevanaka, if there, Vahaya Kishalaha, Vim Kamahale Mazot, Biamata Ela, Behosek Yah, Hotianu Adunai, Mimetsaime Beta Vadim. Yekada <laughs> Yolam <laughs> <laughs>
Liena min to bechata, beshirata, osh bechata, nechemata, rami hirami hama, pimeru. Amen. We say shakoch to Len Hausman for chanting the several aliyot for us today, and yashakoch to David Good for taking this last aliyah. Ta'amo, penina chaya barabra hamba for my etto hamap tear. Barhu at Adonai Hambo Rah Baruch Adonai Hambo Rah Lilam Baed Baruch at Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Haamim Benatan Lanu et Torato Baruch at Adonai Noten Haturah Amen. Ve'ha'ya'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'ha'
beautiful day new. Bless those in need of healing with Rabu Ashlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. We pray for the members of the IDF. May they carry out their mission uh, successfully, and may they be protected and shielded from harm. May they return to their families, in many cases, to their parents, to their spouses, some to their to their children, to their communities in in, in good health and very quickly. And let's say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Haftorah this morning actually is is in in certain respects you could you could draw a comparison between what the what the Haftorah describes and um, and and what we are facing with with what we feel we have to do in um, in Gaza against against Hamas and that is um, what what in fact is uh, is justice and what does that look like. And after being attacked, or in the case of the Israelites, after being enslaved and oppressed and harm inflicted upon them for generations upon generations, what, um, what does uh, retribution, what does justice, uh, what, does it, what does it look like? And uh, in the case of the Haftorah, we're going to, we're going to see that God's wrath uh, pours itself upon the, the future generations of of what would be what would be ancient uh, ancient ancient Egypt, um, and uh, and yet uh, to through the modern lens, um, what we read in the Haftorah might might also seem like collective punishment, which is something that I think uh, uh, re- really particularly to our to our modern senses is not something that we wish upon anyone. Certainly not through a Jewish a Jewish lens. So, so in, in what way we see even here in the Haftorah, the struggle between the need to take action, um, but the need to ensure that we limit harm in certain ways and the struggle to, to actually do that and to know what the right lines should be as they are drawn is uh, really all found here uh, to an extent in, in our Haftorah that Paula is going to check. So we'll turn it over to Paula Tauger for our Haftorah this morning. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Adonai <laughs> Vahashmiu vemigdoho, Vahashmiu venov uftach panches, Imru hitatse, Vahakelach, Kiachlah, Herab, Sivi Vacha, Maduan is half abiracha. Lo amad ki Adonai hadafaho. Yir ba kohoshel gam nafal ish el rehu. Vayomru kuhuma venashuba el amenu. Vel eret molad tenu mi pnech ereb Oru sham paro melech mitraim sha'on he'avir hamoed 
Hayani num ha melech Adonai tzvahot shemo ki katavor beharim uchkamel bayam yavo elegolaha ashilaha chir shevet bat mitzrayim ki nahov la shamatiyah. Nasu yachtav lo amadu ki yom edam ba alehem eight vikudatam kol akanach shelech ki vechayil yelechu ukardumot ba la kichot veetzim. Kartu yaraha numadonai ki lo yehaker ki irabu me arba vein lahamis par. O vishabat mitraim itna biad amtsafon amar donai tsvahot elo hezrael inani foked el amon inaho vial paro vial mitraim vial elo heha vial melacheha vial paro vial avotrim bo Untatim beyad me vakshen nafsham uviad nevuchad retzar melech bavel uviad avadav yacharechen tishkon ki mek adam neum adonai Rata Altira Avdi Akovial Tehat Israel in the Nihi Moshiaha Merahok Yetzaraha Meretz Shiviam Bishav Yakov Vishanan vein macharid Ata altira Avdi Yaakov ne umadonai ki itra ani ki esechala Vichal hadoim asher Idachtira shama veotralo esahala Visar tira le mishpat vinakelo anakeka. Arohata adonai elohim malachalam. Sur kol halamin sadik bechol hadorot pail aneman haomer v'osam idaber mikayim shekol devar avemet batzedek neman atahu adonai eloheinu v'nemanim devarecha v'davar echad mivarecha achor lo yashivrekam ki al melech neman v'rachaman ata baruch ata adonai. I am on the whole of our Rock 
Al HaTorah, V'yal Avodah, V'yal Nevim, V'yal Yom HaShabbat HaZah, Shinatat Alanu Adonai Eloheinu, Liktusha V'limitha, Lechavod Utiparet, Al HaKol Adonai Eloheinu, Anachnu Modim Lach, Umbarchim Otach, Yitbarach Shimcha Befi Kochai, Tamid Leolam Ba'ed, Baruch Atah Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Yeshua to Paula Tauger for chanting our Haftorah this morning. We are, we're back in our Sidurim. We're going to take a moment to pray for our country and also to pray for the state of Israel. Let's welcome David Ehrlich to lead us in the prayer for our country. And Susan Zellman is gonna lead us in the prayer for the state of Israel. Please rise, page 177. Our God and God of our ancestors, with mercy, accept our prayer on behalf of our country and its government. Pour out your blessing upon this land, upon its inhabitants, upon its leaders, its judges, officers, and officials who faithfully devote themselves to the needs of the public. Help them understand the rules of justice you have decreed so that peace and security, happiness and freedom will never depart from our land. Adonai, God, whose spirit is in all creatures, we pray that your spirit will be awakened within all the inhabitants of our land. Uproot from our hearts hatred and malice, jealousy and strife. Plant love and compassion, peace and friendship among the many peoples and faiths who dwell in our nation. Grant us the knowledge to judge justly, the wisdom to act with compassion, and the, no the understanding and courage to root out poverty from our land. May it be your will that our land be a blessing to all who dwell on earth, and may you cause all people to dwell in friendship and freedom. Speedily fulfill the vision of your prophets. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. For all of them, from the least of them to the greatest, shall know me. And let us say, Amen. Avinu Shabbat Shamayim. Sur Yisrael v'goalo, barech et medinat Yisrael, reshit smichat gulatenu. Again, aleha be'evrat chastecha, u'chros aleha sukat shlomecha, u'slach urcha v'amitcha l'rasheha, sareha v'yoetzeha. The Taknem Beza Toba Milpanecha, Haze Getide Migine Erz Kachenu, Hankile Melohenu Yeshua, Ba Terat Nitzachon Teatrem, the Natata Shalom Ba Aretz, the Simchat Olam Liashveha, the Nomar Amen. Yashakot, Susan and David. You may be seated. Bob Brower is going to lead us in Ashray, page 181, then we'll return the scroll to the ark. 181. Hi, Bob. <coughs> <coughs> God all other Nayam who lal meod, believe to our toe and cake her. A dark devote ho decha, the divrain if law teha ashiha. Zecher of to chayabiu, the seed hot chay iranenu. Tov 
Kuvod malchut chayom eru, ugvurat chayud aberu. Malchut cha malchut kol olamim, umem shalt cha bechol dor vador. Ene kol elecha yusaberu, veatano ten lahem et achlam beito. Sadiq Adonai b'chol dirachav, v'chasid b'chol ma'asav. Ritzon yireyav yaseh, v'et shabbatam yishma v'yoshiyem. Tehilat Adonai yedaber pi, v'yivarech hol basar, shem katshole olam va'ed. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah,
<laughs> you may be seated, everyone. You can see it. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I mean, we we've been we've been talking about Israel since October. I actually we, we've been talking about Israel all year because we were talking a lot about the protests prior to that. But any hope that October seventh would elicit sympathy from the world was quickly quashed in the most extraordinary of ways. A virtual tsunami we know this of Jewish hate began to be felt nearly in every corner of the world. Thank God we still have some friends and allies beyond the Jewish world. But by and large, the world's response uh, has been not only underwhelming, but has probably underscored something incredibly sobering and scary for us. And perhaps nowhere has it been harder for the Jewish community than on campuses across the country. This morning, uh, we are delighted to, to receive a little bit of a report uh, about, about campuses, um, particularly one campus. We were meant to have two speakers this morning. Um, one of them was Romy Paldi, an Israeli grad student at uh, Newark campus of Rutgers. Um, Naomi, uh, uh, Romy uh, wrote me just before Shabbat to say that, um, that she came down with, uh, with a fever and was sort of on the fence. And I, you know, with a fever, particularly these days, we'll we'll get Romy back at some point, um, and and we'll hear about about Rutgers, perhaps newer campus, and then maybe actually Miriam just said maybe we'll try to get a Rutgers panel, uh, both of main campus and Newark together. Um, but our our keynote this morning uh, is is here, like a a good um, a good Jewish boy. He came with his parents and his grandmothers. Uh, Charlie Covet, uh, Charlie is 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 my. I like to joke, but Charlie's my baby cousin, and you all. He's about twice my height. You'll see when he stands up. Um, here's here's just very briefly how how Charlie and I are related. In the in the late 1920s, uh, a family of yeah. Well, there's a story, all right. The late 1920s um, in Poland, a family of eight and uh, and the parents had relatives in Saskatchewan, Canada, and they were able to um, to get two visas. Essentially, they were they were a family of many, but they got two visas. And so they 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 picked two daughters, two of their daughters, a 14 year old and an 18 year old to head to Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, my grandmother was the 14-year-old, and Charlie's great-grandmother was the 18-year-old. And um, never again, by the way, would they see any of their relatives or or family. Uh, the, the rest of them did not did not make it, and and that would uh, that would eventually be it. So that was the last time they saw each other, and that's that's how Charlie and I are related. Um, but beyond that, Charlie has an incredibly impressive uh, CV. Um, Charlie is one of the most articulate and thoughtful uh, freshmen at, 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 at the college level that I have ever encountered. Um, he's an undergrad student at Harvard. He's a contributing writer of the Harvard Crimson. Charlie has been outspoken. If you, if you Google the name Charlie Cobbett, you will not only see many articles and, and opinion papers that he's written, but also interviews that he's given, um, podcasts, television, news, uh, and the like. Um, we are, we, we, we as a family are all incredibly proud of Charlie. And, um, and I think that, that we're all going to uh, be enriched by, by some of Charlie's observations that he'll share with us this morning. So we're gonna invite Charlie to uh, to speak and to share his perspective. And then we'll have a few minutes where we'll open it up for some questions, some dialogue, uh, and then and then a brief musaf and, and we'll head to Kiddush. So Charlie, Kavit, welcome. Thank you for coming to CBI in New Jersey this morning. 
take that as <laughs> um, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, and thank you, Rabbi Ari, for such a nice um, intro and for having me come speak today. Um, so as you heard, uh, my name is Charlie, and I'm a freshman um, at Harvard. Um, and when I was thinking earlier this week about um, what I was going to say today, um, you know, I assume that a lot of the story of what's been happening on college campuses probably isn't um, that new to any of you. So I'll start by telling you a story from last year um, that my family is probably familiar with, um, which is when I was um, in Israel on my gap year. So um, I did my gap year on a program called Kivunim, um, which is in Jerusalem. Um, and I decided to do something which, in retrospect, was probably not the best idea. Um, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, about once a week, I would go to different schools in Palestinian parts of the West Bank to basically volunteer um, to, help te to help teach English um, in different sort of English classes. Um, and for obvious reasons, um, I didn't want to tell anyone that I was Jewish. And I'm sort of lucky that when your name is Charlie, um, when you're Canadian, um, nobody really has any reason to suspect, um, you know, that anything is amiss. Um, and so at one of these schools, there were a couple of teachers um, who I became friendly with. And one day they actually invited me. They said, you should come have lunch with us and our friends um, in Ramallah, um, which is obviously in the West Bank. Um, so since I felt sort of more comfortable with them, I decided that I would test the waters a little bit. And I said to them, um, what would you say if next week I came with one of my friends who is Jewish? Uh, what would you say if he uh, came to visit us next week? And I'll never forget what one of the teacher's friends who had uh, come to that lunch said at that moment. Um, he said, I would kill the Jew on the spot. So I'm not telling you this story to say that all Palestinians hate Jews, because we do know that that's not true. And, you know, it's important to say there were plenty of good people that I met in the West Bank, too. But I am saying this because I think it's important also to not be deluded by what we're actually hearing when we hear things like globalize the intifada or by any means necessary um, or, you know, a lot of worse things, too, on college campuses. Um, you know, the problem, I think, doesn't really have a lot to do with Israel's war with Hamas. And I think that's something we learned when a lot of these protests started um, actually on October 8th, when the, att the attacks of October 7th were actually um, still ongoing in some parts of southern Israel. Um, the problem that I think we have on campuses is with Israel itself and with Jews. And, you know, one one challenge I think that we've had in combating it is that um, the hatred is sort of very much veiled. And, um, you know, I have a friend um, who's a Hungarian Jew, and he was saying to me, you know, at least in Hungary, they're very, you know, they wear their Zionist armband um, very proudly. You know, it's not a secret that they hate Jews. Um, but, you know, at Harvard, and I'm sure on many other campuses, um, they always highlight the Jews that they have among their ranks. Um, they say, you know, anti-Zionism doesn't equal anti-Semitism. Um, so, you know, the question of, well, is there actually anti-Semitism at Harvard? One of the best places to see it is on this app called SideChat, um, which is basically an anonymous messaging app um, that's very popular at Harvard and is only accessible to Harvard students. Um, and I'll just read you some highlights from recent weeks on SideChat. Um, burn it like Far Aza. Let's all reflect on how much power the Jews have in the media and let them cook. So on SideChat, you know, because it's anonymous, you can really see, um, you know, I could go on and on with dozens of more comments. Some of them, you know, which uh, targeted, you know, members of the Jewish community personally, um, really very hurtful things. And it's really the best place to see um, the true face of what, you know, a lot of, um, I think, what the pro-Palestinian side has tried to keep hidden. So I'll tell you another story, which is that um, a couple of weeks ago, Harvard announced that one of the leaders of the Palestine Solidarity Committee, which is basically the main um, pro-Palestinian group on campus, um, they announced that this student had won a Rhodes Scholarship. Um, and what he was, the, with this Rhodes Scholarship, uh, the student's going to be at Oxford, um, studying progressive political messaging, which I guess he's clearly very good at. Um, this is a student who on October 8th wrote that what was happening um, the day before was resistance against a brutal occupier. So again, this student will be going to Oxford um, on a Rhodes Scholarship. And I think, you know, what's tough about things like that is sort of seeing how um, people can say such terrible things and 
there's apparently no repercussions at all. And, you know, I think that um, I'm sure you've all heard Claudine Gay's sort of now notorious testimony in Congress, um, where she said calls for genocide of Jews were context dependent. Um, in my view, I think that comment was sort of representative of a much larger issue um, where, you know, all of a sudden free speech and kind of being able to say whatever you want has come to the forefront. Um, I mean, you know, just remember, this is a school where we all have to do a mandatory Title IX training. And, you know, some highlights from that training are that, quote unquote, sizeism or fat phobia um, perpetuate, quote unquote, violence. So, you know, it's frustrating when things like that are, you know, seen as violent hate speech, but saying globalize the intifada um, can help you, you know, win a Rhodes Scholarship. Um, so, you know, um, I think that there was an article in the Wall Street Journal by Ben Sass, who was starting this new university in Florida. And what he said is, I would tolerate students saying um, globalize the intifada on my campus, but it wouldn't be after having taken such a hard line against, you know, any other kind of hate speech in the past. So I think that it's a double standard that's especially frustrating. Um, and, you know, just other examples of sort of total impunity. Um, there were students gathering inside a university building and um, sort of, you know, doing one of their chants. And what's interesting is in English, they chant um, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. But in Arabic, they chant from water to water, Palestine is Arab. Um, which is obviously an interesting distinction there. And again, you know, gives you a bit of a look at what it is that they actually want, um, not a free Palestine, but an Arab Palestine. And, you know, my question is, um, you know, which I've said to my parents a lot is, you know, would the university have allowed students to say America should be white from the Atlantic to the Pacific, right? I think um, hopefully the answer would be no. Um, you know, another example is um, in November, they did a big overnight sit-in um, at the office of sort of the administration. Um, and instead of letting the um, the trespassers stay the night, um, the administrators, the dean of Harvard, actually, the dean of Harvard College um, brought them Twizzlers and um, burritos, including vegetarian options, by the way, um, and slipped, uh, slipped them uh, different snacks through the window. So again, you know, it's really just seeing um, sort of, you know, the especially sort of um, kid gloves that the university seems to use that um, that's especially frustrating. Um, I think of sort of all of the trends that we're seeing, um, the one that might be the most scary is the way that Zionism, I think, in many ways has sort of become a scapegoat for oppression around the world. Um, at a recent rally in Boston where Harvard students were um, sort of the, the headline students, um, one of them said, the headline speakers, um, one, of the, one of the students said, there's no black liberation without, Palest without Palestinian liberation. The military occupying force in Gaza is the same occupying force that terrorizes our, our communities here in the US. So, you know, in my view, it's sort of the classic anti-Semitic trope, right, where the Jews are the scapegoat um, and, you know, the evil of Zionism is responsible for evil in the US too. Um, but, you know, I do think it's important to also highlight that um, not everything is grim. And there are two things that um, I've been trying to remind myself over these last few weeks. The first is that while definitely I think that the way that things are moving are scary, um, in some important ways, it also is not, you know, Germany in the 1930s, right? I mean, we have 300,000 people who were in Washington um, just, you know, a couple weeks ago um, or a couple months ago now at a protest, um, you know, and to show our support for Israel, right? We have Jews around the world, um, including numerous initiatives just at Harvard, um, sending helmets and boots and other gear to the Israeli army. Um, so, you know, in many ways, I mean, the Jewish community, I think, is stronger um, than we've ever been. And, you know, I'm reminded a lot of um, a chant that we heard sort of an especially disturbing one um, at Harvard um, last month, which was it's about numbers and volume. We have them outnumbered. And, you know, there's no denying um, that we are the outnumbered group. Um, but, you know, as Mark Cuban said, um, you know, in a great Instagram video, which I recommend you watch, he said there will always be people who try to hate us but the love we have for each other is a hundred times stronger. So, you know, these students might have the much bigger crowds um, and they definitely do outnumber us, outnumber us, but I do think that the power in what we have um, and the love that we have for each other, hopefully is a lot stronger. And the last thing that um, I would just say to try and remember is that um, is not losing sight of the fact that we are on the right side, you know, which can be difficult because one of their favorite lines um, at Harvard is, 
we're on the right side of history. It's sort of a line that we hear um, ad nauseum. Um, and, you know, when you hear that so much, you might start to doubt, you might start to even doubt yourself and say, um, you know, are they on the right side of history? Um, but I was just uh, reading the other day about um, a quote from one of the leaders of Hamas. And this is what he said about Palestinians in Gaza. Um, death has become an industry. This is why they have formed human shields of the women, the children, the elderly. It is as if they were saying to the Zionist enemy, we desire death like you desire life. So again, he said, we desire death like you desire life. Um, and to me, that was sort of the best reminder possible that we are on the side of life. And um, that's why I think um, for me, and I think for a lot of us on these campuses, that's what gives us um, the strength to keep going. Thank you. Oh, that's heavy, inspiring. Um, that, you know, it's 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 not every day that that we have uh, a current Harvard student here in our midst. Um, th there may very well be some some questions that 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 I want you to ask. I know D David's got one ready to ready to fire. Um, Helene and Amy and some others. So why don't we? Are you okay taking yeah, a few of questions? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and uh, and if uh, let's. Oh, David, we'll start with you. Go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. I mean, one of the ways that you can sometimes um, this that sometimes serves as a barometer um, is is again that app side chat, and it's interesting to see um, when someone writes a comment on side chat, you can sort of see how many upvotes it has. Um, so you know, if there's an anti-Semitic comment right that gets you know a hundred upvotes, that obviously you know is a bit of a disturbing sign that a hundred people might agree. Um, you know, I would say that the, the students that really make a lot of the noise are definitely a minority, um, and I think that. That actually, in one way that sort of helped us is that I think a lot of students are kind of just, you know, for lack of a better word, kind of say, you know, shut up already. Um, I remember that, you know, they were trying to take a picture at our convocation um, and the photographer kept trying to take the picture, but he couldn't because they kept interrupting it with chance. And, um, you know, I just heard um, a student standing by me who said, do they want a free Palestine or something? You know, so um, there definitely is, I think, a degree of frustration, probably from what might even be a silent majority. Um, with, you know, the tax that, that they use, I mean, interrupting classes, interrupting, you know, dinners and meals with faculty, um, all kinds of things like that. But, you know, at the same time, I mean, when you walk around the campus, um, especially on what they call, you know, kafia Thursdays, you see a lot of students um, wearing kafias. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I'll hear, um, you know, friends of mine who are juniors or seniors say that it sort of is disappointing when someone that they think that, you know, they've been friends with for years um, then actually turns out to be sort of on that side. So, you know, it's tough to say what the exact numbers are, but it definitely is, um, it's not a majority, I think a very sizable minority. Um, but I think the side making a lot of the noise is definitely, definitely a minority. By the way, in, in, in our day, it was Martini Monday. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <It was. Yeah. laughs> Which I think is more fun than Kapia Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Helene. Um, do you feel comfortable 
Yeah, no, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I think it's we've we really seen in the last few months is that students really have kind of had to make the choice, you know, are they going to sort of blend in, right, um, with, you know, the broader, you know, Harvard student body and not really make this their, their issue, um, or there's been students that have done the reverse and have really kind of come out of the shadows and are now um, a regular presence at Hillel and Chabad um, since October 7th. Um, I think that, you know, I'm lucky that um, last semester, four of my five professors actually happened to be Jewish. Um, and, you know, the Harvard Jewish community is quite small. I mean, my grade is only around 5% Jewish, um, which is which is really small. Um, and, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the numbers, you know, this year after, after everything that's happened. Um, but, you know, I think the benefit of that is that it really is a tight-knit community and students have, um, I think, been very kind of supportive with one another. Um, so, you know, I think you, you really have felt kind of that that embrace um, since since October. I mean, I was only there for a month, you know, before this happened. So it's hard to even look at a before and after. But I do think that um, the community has definitely come together um, in a really uh, special way since since what happened. Um, and you haven't seen, I think, the same, you know, the way that in the past, right, there would be, you know, always disagreements on Israel. And there was the J Street camp and, you know, the non-J Street camp. And um, now that's, you know, people said, oh, you know, I wonder how long that kind of sense of togetherness will continue. And so far, um, I do think that by and large, um, the by and large, I think this, the people that the people that are, you know, on the side of um, that are on Israel's side, I think have continued to be. Um, but I think where there's been a difficult question is sort of what to do with, um, you know, that small but vocal minority of Jews that, um, you know, are, are very kind of prominent voices in the pro-Palestinian movement. And, um, you know, how do you you know, how do you interact with them in the Hillel building? Do you make an effort to welcome them into the community? And um, I think that's definitely probably what um, what what probably uh, I think Hillel is probably struggling with the most. Chabad is probably less concerned with that question, in all honesty. Um, but yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Amy. And then I know Steve has a question. Also, yeah, I mean, that, there was actually, I mean, there was there was a lot of talk about that because that that really was the strategy was was the covering of the faces and you know and wearing uh, masks. Um, if you would go to the protest, probably a majority of the people standing there um, would be wearing, if not a kafia, like literally just like a surgical mask um, to cover their face. Um, and you know, there kind of was no um, protocol. I, I don't think that there was any kind of you know, history of that in any other protest movement. So um, I don't think that the university really, I mean, in so many ways, the university was kind of caught flat-footed and didn't really seem to know what to respond, that being one of many, one of many examples. But yeah, definitely, you know, and I think, I think it does say something that, you know, a lot of these students are not even, you know, the ones who signed the statement, um, you know, the what happened with sort of the, you know, the quote-unquote doxing and, you know, a truck driving around Harvard, um, with the student who signed um, that statement that called Israel responsible for October 7th, there was a truck driving around with their faces saying Harvard's leading anti-Semites. Um, so then there was the argument, well, we're covering our faces because we don't want to be doxxed. Um, and, you know, very kind of uh, diverging reactions in the Jewish community. Some said, well, it's an accountability truck um, was one extreme. The other extreme said, you know, this is intimidation and it's wrong. Um, and then you had Bill Ackman obviously involved, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Um, so, you know, it, it, it definitely, I, I think was probably the most, um, if there was any question that I think divided the Jewish community, it was, it was the issue of doxing, which is, I think, pretty related to the question of covering the faces. Charlie, could you, I don't know, can you define doxing for, for, for everyone? Yeah, I mean, well, the technical definition of doxing is basically releasing someone's personal info um, and address, um, which is what, um, which is not actually what happened after October 7th, but um, essentially Bill Ackman wrote on Twitter 
you know, I think that um, I and everyone else on Wall Street does not want to hire anyone who signed um, that infamous statement um, on October 8th that blamed Israel for October 7th. Um, and so, you know, there was this sort of enormous effort to name and shame everyone that had signed the statement. And it did get a little bit out of control. I mean, some of the people that were named um, were not even current students at Harvard, um, were actually not connected to it. So, you know, there was a little bit of sort of overzealousness. Um, but, you know, there also was the wing of um, especially sort of, I would say, more the Chabad oriented wing that invited Bill Ackman to Harvard and was more supportive of um you know, not ex not explicitly supportive of it, but um, was kind of lending a, a sort of tacit endorsement to that strategy. Um, but it's it's you know, I I don't you know I can't I can't say what the right answer is. Um, but I do think you know I think at a minimum, um, it does not seem fair that that students can actually hide their identity right if they're going to want to be so outspoken. Have you found any class? Well, when you went to the class, is it? You focus on your studies and the teachers are not bringing this up one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, that's actually probably one of um, the points that, that the Jewish community has tried to raise the most with Harvard, um, because um, I was actually in um, sort of the signature intro to economics class the day that they did a walkout um, of all of the classes at Harvard sort of at the same time on the same day. Um, and um, essentially the leaders of the Palestinian movement came into the class and were um, you know, handing out posters, um, including handing them out to, you know, the row full of, you know, visibly Orthodox Jewish students, um, which did cause a lot of controversy. Um, and, you know, technically that is against the rules um, to, to um, come into a class or to interrupt a class. Um, and, you know, the question is, what is Harvard actually doing about it? Um, the, the new president actually just released um, a statement yesterday saying um, that, you know, there won't be tolerance for interrupting classes. Um, so we'll see whether they follow through on that. But I think in terms of actually the, the material in the classes where there's probably been the most of an issue is not with the actual professors, but with the grad, with the TS or the TAs, uh, because a lot of these are grad students um, at grad schools that are probably even more favorable to the Palestinians than the colleges. Um, so that, that I think has been an enormous issue is um, what happens when, you know, you have uh, the person grading your papers or grading your tests. Um, your TA um, is, you know, someone that's wearing a kafia. Um, so that's, you know, been a big ongoing issue. I mean, I know that um, the guy who's teaching my writing seminar next semester called, um, you know, the rally, um, called the rally um, in Washington, a pro-genocide rally. Uh, my friend, you know, his, um, his proctor, which is sort of like an RA, um, wrote that the Zionist beast must be slain um, on his Instagram. So, you know, that that has been an issue, um, the, the grad students um, sort of being, you know, kind of the first the first place that students are supposed to turn to and them being pretty overwhelmingly, um, pretty overwhelmingly anti-Zionist, anti-Israel. Thanks. Uh, we're going to, Adam's got a question. Yeah, let's go with Adam. I'm curious if you were... Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that what's interesting about the pro-Palestinian movement is that a lot of it is actually led by non-Palestinians. Um, which is frustrating because if you try and engage with them on com in a conversation, you can actually see pretty quickly that, um, you know, they're not actually even so knowledgeable about the history. Um, if you try and actually, you know, get into the, you know, minutia beyond the talking points, um, you know, they don't even fully understand the distinction of Gaza versus the West Bank. Um, where, I, where I've actually had more luck is talking to actual Palestinians. Um, we we'll actually find are more empathic, um, you know, are kind of more willing to say, you know, Hamas, um, does not represent us, um, you know, speak are honest about October 7th having been wrong. Um, but, but what's frustrating is that, you know, by and large, the students making the noise um, are not Palestinians, don't really have anything at stake, obviously, you know, have never been to Israel, have no family there, um, don't understand the history in a, you know, complex and nuanced way. So um, that makes it a lot harder, I think, to have those conversations. And also, I think there's just an element of, you know, why is it right that 
that you should, you know, obviously everyone should be able to speak on it, but why is it that a student um, who kind of has nothing at stake here, right, should be the face of the of the Palestinian movement on campus? You know, I do think there's something um, a bit bizarre about that. I think, so Alan, was that just be, did, all right, maybe, um, how many, how many more questions were there? Let me see. Let me just make, I've got Alan. All right. Alan and Rachel, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. And then that will be a, a nice way to uh, come up. Most of them, so again, are, are from Harvard, but not from the college. They're from, you know, Harvard is um, an enormous school. Most of the students are not college students. So um, a lot of them are from, you know, the Divinity School um, or other, um, you know, the Kennedy School. Um, and they're the ones that have been leading a lot of this. But um, originally, after October 7th, a lot of the people at these protests were not Harvard students at all. And one thing that the university has to its credit done is when there's a protest, they'll sort of um, close the campus to those without a Harvard ID. Um, and it's interesting that that has made the turnout at a lot of these rallies um, a lot lower uh, because, you know, the sort of, you know, people in Boston would hear, wow, right, there's a chance to, you know, protest it at Harvard, right? Why not be there? Um, you know, I remember actually even hearing that um, I was at a at a doctor's appointment um, in Boston and the nurse said to me, oh, you know, I heard there's a Palestinian protest um, at Harvard today. You know, I wish I could have been there. Um, so, you know, the good thing that the university has done is, is kind of literally closing the gates. Um, and that that's made turn out a lot lower, which is, I guess, a good thing. Finally, Rachel. <laughs> hmm, that's a good question. I mean, I guess the most important thing I think would be um, what is the Jewish community like? Because, you know, there's no question, right, that Harvard's Jewish community is a lot smaller, but um, it also has really come together. So it's not just about the size, right? It's really about, you know, um, is is there a tight-knit community that actually, um, you know, is, is supporting one another? Um, so I think that would probably be the most important thing that I would um, be focusing on in retrospect. But, you know, um, I mean, I would probably want to get a sense of, you know, what what is the vibe in terms of, um, I mean, I think there's kind of a question is what what is um, the new normal going to be, right? I mean, there was always a lot of pro-Palestinian activism at Harvard. Um, I don't think it's going to forever continue like how it was last semester. I hope not. Um, but the new normal will probably be at a higher pitch than what it was in the past. So I would probably want to get a sense of, you know, how much disruption will there be? I mean, luckily at Harvard, life has continued as normal. I mean, I have friends at Columbia who um, have said that they want to transfer because, you know, it's just a constant um, barrage there. So, you know, Harvard is not even where it's the worst. Um, so I would definitely want to, you know, a school like Columbia, I would probably be hesitant to apply to. <laughs> In all honesty. <laughs> um, I, I, Charlie, I just want I I I really want to I really want to thank you for for coming um and for for addressing us and answering some of these questions. This has been on on the minds of so many, especially, you know, not only not only people who have who are now empty nesters and have kind of gone through the process but also uh like Rachel and others who have who have kids who are um teens who are who, who are going through and really need to answer some of these questions. There is there is no doubt, as you said, an important role for uh, Jewish students uh, on on all campuses to be able to spread. I think what you ended with in your remarks, which is um, the that we are on when it comes to morality and when it comes to you know we are on the right side of history, um, and uh, and that we we choose life. It's what we it's what we it's what we want. Um, and that is ultimately, I think, the uh, the major distinction and something that we have to remind ourselves about that we need to carry ourselves and hold ourselves uh, high and 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 proudly for who we are and what we stand for and what our identity is as as Jews, as Zionists, as as, as people who want 
freedom for, for, for all in this world. Um, so thank you, thank you for sharing for sharing your remarks. All right. And we won't we won't fault you if you want to walk over to Charlie as Cantawalla leads us and moose up and, and schmooze. That's that's okay. He's here. He's here for you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Cantawalla's gonna lead us in uh, in a Hechi Kedusha, page 184, the Hatsi Kaddish. Let's sing together, everyone. It kadar kadash shemei raba beramad ibrach yutei v'yamich malchutei v'chayeh chol v'mechod v'chayeh dechol beit Yisrael v'agrav isman karib imru amen yehi shemei raba mevarach le'al nam le'al me'al ma'ya it parach v'ishtabach. Vit par vit romam vit nasse, vit adar vit alev vit alal, shmei di kudesha b'riachu, lein ma min ko b'chata v'shilata, tush b'chata v'nev b'bata, damilan b'yalma v'imeru amei. Baruch ata Adonai. Hello, Abraham, hello, it's Hatro Yakov, hello, Sarah, hello, Hari, hello, Rachel, hello, Leia, hello, Gadol, Gibor, no, 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 Ata Adonai, Abraham of Oket Sarah, Ata Gibali and Amadonai, the Khayimiti Mata, Rabla Shia, Mashiva Rua, Umari Tagashem, Mechal Kel Khayim, Bechasen, Mechayimiti, Berachamim Rabim. So men no blim, but a pay for him. Oh, my dear, a suri. Oh, my kayer, a monato, lishe ne apa. Me, a moka, a givura. Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzivat, Melech Ol Haaretz Kibodo, Kibodo, Shema, 
Shema Mary, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Shema Yisrael, Adonai Adonai
Baruch Ata Adonai Hamevarech et Amo Israel Bashalom. It kadal vigadash meraba Shalom. <laughs> Alain <laughs> Let me invite those of you in mourning and those observing a yort site to remain standing. We'll turn to page 207 for the mourner's Kaddish. Yit gadal ve'it kadash shemei rabba ve'olma divrach irute v'yamlich malchute bechayecho nubyamecho nubchaye dechol beit Yisrael bagalau v'izman kari v'imeru amen yehe shmei rabba mevorach Leolam ulo meo maya, yit barach, vishtabach, vipaal, vitromam, vitnase, vitada, vitale, vitalal, shme de kudisha, brihu, leela, min kol, birhata, veshirata, tush behata, venechemata, damiran beolma, vimeru, amen, yehe shlama, rabba min shmaya, vechaim alenu, val kol Israel, vimeru, amen. O se shalom bim roma, fuya se shalom, aleinu valkol Israel vimeru, amen. 
So to those of you on Zoom and live stream and those here in the sanctuary, to all of you remembering a loved one this morning, we pray that uh, that that their memories remain a blessing for you in, in your lives today and every day. Amen. Here's Ruth right here in front of me. Uh, Ruth is our BEMA officer and, and we'll, we'll offer some, some greetings and announcements. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, please join us uh, after the services for Kiddush, which is sponsored today by Andy and Susan, who are sadly for us moving to New York City, um, but you will always be part of the community and will always have a place at Congregation B'nai Israel. We wish you the best in your new endeavor and your new life in New York. Um, and I know that you wanted to keep this low key, but um, David Tagger has a little story that he wanted to share. Well, so, you know, Andy, some people um, take moving to New York as a challenge and a little difficult, much more quicker, much more populated you know, than the suburbs where you've been used to living. But I remember, and there are some of your desert dog, dogs are here, you know, when we did the first Israel ride, each one of us had bicycles with regular wheels. <laughs> you know, they were big wheels. I mean, you had this bicycle, this fold up bike with like 12 inch wheels. And I remember watching you work so hard to get up those hills in the, in those, and we commented on it every time I saw you up the hill. So I know, but you made it up every hill. So I know that you will make this challenge just as easily. There won't be a difficult challenge for you because if you can do Israel on 12 inch wheels, <laughs> you can do anything. But anyway, your desert dogs all here, wish you the best of luck and we'll definitely miss you. And you'll always be a desert dog. <laughs> and now for some announcements. Tonight, Texas Hold'em Poker Tournament beginning at seven o'clock. And if you were struggling to decide between football and poker, no need to worry. Football will be going on in the background. So please join us tonight. There is still time to join. Um, our next Arab Shabbat Live is Friday, February 2nd with uh, our normal early Bim Bam Shabbat for the preschool age children and our newest program for kindergarten through third grade uh, programming at the same time, followed by Shabbat dinner and then Kabbalah Shabbat, please RSVP. Very important so we know who is coming and we have enough food. Um, next week, big week at B'nai Israel, Sisterhood Shabbat. <laughs> so um, are there still parts available? There are still a couple of parts available. Accessible parts. So if you've been hesitant, but still want to participate, please see Miriam and please come. Uh, it's a Friday night with a lovely hors d'oeuvre oneg to follow services, which start at 6 p.m. And then, of course, Shabbat morning with a beautiful catered kiddish. Um, Coming up on February 7th, the Israel Affairs Committee has a new book club. The first book will be The Genius of Israel by best-selling authors Dan Senor and Saul Singer. Uh, please get the book early so you're prepared to participate. Um, last thing that I want to note is that summer camp registration is open. If you have children, please sign up. If you have friends that have children, please encourage them to look at our program. And believe it or not, enrollment for next year's school will be coming up soon. So please spread the word. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, so the, the desert dogs all came out for you, Andy. Uh, unfortunately, some of our choir members um, couldn't be here, um, but all, all of the choir um, wish both of you the best. And I don't know that if you realize this, in order to be able to actually move to New York City and leave the choir, you need to find a replacement uh, base for you. So otherwise, sorry, you can't go. <laughs> but in any case, so um, we only have like our... Um,
our upper voices, our sopranos and altos, so we're not going to do a choir piece today, but you're always welcome to come back anytime. You've been a valuable member of our, our choir and so many other ways that you've contributed to CBI and um, we'll definitely miss your presence here. So we'll conclude with a regular tune for <laughs> the, oh. the, I just want to, um, I, I, I want to note that that CBI, that we're volunteering to host two families in temporary shelters through the organization Family Promise of Essex County for two weeks in February. And part of what we can do to contribute is to bring non-perishable items. There are other ways that we can assist. Best thing to do is, Angela Cohen is here, um, was, our, was our greeter today at the door. Talk to Angela or contact um, Melissa Zarin and our social action committee to find out how to be involved in, in partnering as we host two families in, in temporary shelters in the month of February. All right, Mika and the cantor are gonna lead us. Shemoni Kra, as I met Shemoni Kra, the Akare, he fought a co, the Vato, he loved no rock, the who are I am, the who are that, the who ye at the Tibara, the who be. Betty Barra, the who had the ancient Laham Shilo, Lehafira, Belly Rashid, Belly Tarlit, Veloha, Mamisra, Veloha, Behamisra. The who a lee, the high go a lee, the so heavily, the eric sara, the who nisi, umano si, menat kosi, the yo mekra, that's first, menat kosi, the yo mekra, the yado. Ahidrupi, the Aitishan, the Aira, the Imaruhi, Geviati, Adonai, the Veloira, Adonai, the Veloira, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. I'm <laughs> 